Ukrainian National Guard Reserve Major Oleksiy Hetman says that the pace of Russian offensive actions has increased. The Russian army is advancing up to two kilometers every day. That means the pace of its offensive has increased. The Russians can cut the main road to Kurokov, which we use to provide logistics supplies. If the main logistics routes are cut, there are backup routes, but they go through fields, noted Hetman on Espresso TV. According to a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, weather conditions, particularly rain, can make it difficult to move due to washed-out roads, which is dangerous. Obviously, there is a threat of encirclement of troops around Kurokov, and this is part of the Russians' plans. It is believed that attacking large cities head-on is not a smart tactic. Usually, they try to cover and cut off the logistics so that it is difficult for a military unit in the city to defend itself. The unit may be left without any defense capabilities at all, forcing it to retreat or to be surrounded, added Hetman. Over autumn, large chunks of Ukrainian territory, sometimes including entire cities, have been lost on a near-daily basis in southern Donetsk Oblast, while Russian forces have also made operationally significant gains near Toretsk, Chasivyar, Kupiansk, as well as on their own soil in Kursk Oblast. The increasing pace of Russia's advance is evidence of how the war of attrition that many officials and analysts in the West had called a stalemate had slowly but surely been flowing in Moscow's favor. With manpower shortage and systemic structural issues at the heart of Ukraine's predicament, the options for Kyiv and its partners to stabilize the front in the face of Russia's acute resource advantages look limited. The most critical sector of the front line, as of early November, is in the southern half of the Ukrainian-controlled part of Donetsk Oblast. After advancing quickly, Beyond Abdiivka toward the key logistical hub of Pokrovsk over summer, Russian forces pivoted south in early September, cutting off a large pocket of Ukrainian-held land west of the Vovcha River with the successful capture of the city of Ukrainsk. Further Russian advances toward Pokrovsk, initially slowed over autumn, halted at the gates of the city of Selidov, where the relatively fresh 15th National Guard Brigade took over the defense of the mining city once home to over 22,000 people. Over the next two months, however, instead of storming Selidov, the Russian troops picked away at the fields on either flank, which were both manned by more exhausted Ukrainian brigades plagued by personnel losses. North Korean troops clashed with Ukrainian troops in the Kursk region. This most likely occurred in an attempt to probe the Ukrainian defense line in the region, the New York Times reports. It is noted that this battle in the Kursk region was limited and not large-scale. The information about the clash between the Ukrainian and North Korean military was confirmed to the American press by a senior U.S. official and a Ukrainian official on condition of anonymity. The Ukrainian official told the New York Times that the clash was likely intended to test the Ukrainian line of weaknesses.
The Ukrainian official added that the DPRK soldiers were fighting alongside Russia's 810th Separate Marine Brigade. However, it was not specified when exactly the battle took place. The US official told the New York Times that a significant number of North Korean troops were killed in the clash. Ukraine's leader Volodymyr Zelensky, who had earlier condemned the West's lack of response to the North Korean troops, said these first battles with North Korea open a new chapter of instability in the world. Ukraine says an estimated 11,000 North Korean soldiers were in the Kursk border region, where Ukrainian troops have a foothold. In recent weeks, South Korean and U.S. intelligence, as well as NATO, have said that they have seen evidence of North Korean troops being involved in Russia's war. In an interview with South Korean broadcaster KBS, Rustem Umarov confirmed this, saying he expects a significant number of the North Korean troops to be engaged in combat, though he added it was, so far, just small contacts, not full-scale engagement. Most of them are still undergoing training, he added. They're wearing Russian uniforms, they're undergoing tactical training, and they're being deployed under various commands of the Russian army on the front lines, Umarov said. Reports of such a move by North Korea have also alarmed the South, raising tensions between the two sides. It pledges that Russia and North Korea will help each other in the event of aggression against either country.